Hello, this is Archie Dunlop with Talking Astrology with Archie on Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. I don't know much about South Korean culture, but I do know that K-pop is pretty important in South Korea. K-pop being South Korean pop music. And recently... Um, a K-pop star has died. That would be Moonbin. Now, I hadn't heard of him until a couple of days ago, but apparently his death is really big news. And he was found dead in his apartment on uh, April 19th, I believe. Um, I, there are thoughts that it was suicide. Now, I should say that I only have his date of birth. I don't have his time of birth. I do have his place of birth. But, you know, with that chart, there's not a great deal I can say. Um, so what I'm really doing is I'm saying, well, I know that he died very young at the age of 25. So given his chart, as I see it, how might this death be explained? What might have been going on? And of course, I'm using complete hindsight. Um, I'm sure if I'd had this chart before his death and I tried to forecast, predict that he was going to die, I don't think I would have had much success. Um, you know, with astrology, you always have to be careful because if you really want to find something in a chart, you can us you usually can find something to support what has happened. So you always have to be careful. Anyway, but so before I look at um, today's stars and today's I Ching, I'm going to turn to Moonbin. So here is Moonbin, or here was Moonbin um, before his... Um, recent death. So you can see he was born on January 26, 1998 in, I believe, Chongju in South Korea. So that makes him 25 years old. So what about this chart makes him vulnerable? Well, I think the first thing to note about Moonbin's horoscope is that he has a lot of planets in Capricorn. He has a Moon in Capricorn. He has a Mercury. He has Mercury in Capricorn. He has Venus in Capricorn. He has Neptune in Capricorn. So, Capricorn is um, a sign that uh, likes to work hard. It has a great sense of duty and responsibility. Very often. Um, now, with that Moon in Capricorn, the problem with about the problem with Moon in Capricorn is that material reality can get in the way with the softer side of life. You know, one might be so focused on making money and being successful that you miss out on other stuff. Though his uh, son is in Aquarius. So Aquarius is um, actually the worst sign for the sun to be in. Now that might sound strange because we all know Aquarians, it's got a good reputation, age of Aquarius, whatever. But uh, the sun is ruled in Leo, therefore it is in its detriment in its opposite sign. And the sun is conjunct, conjunct Uranus. Now as far as his um, death is concerned, apparently a few months before he died, he was talking about the pressure you know, I think the psychological pressure. And at the same time, he didn't want to disappoint his fans. So you can see that's a real issue. You know, you're under psychological pressure. There's pressure on you to be out there in the public eye. Yet you've got these psychological issues. And perhaps um, in the cultural, cultural milieu he was in, it wasn't the right thing to do to talk openly about the way one felt. But in fact, he did. So it was it's kind of good that he was able to express it. But uh, it doesn't seem that it was enough. And I think that point about wanting to make his fans happy um, 
you know, is a bit sad. I mean, he shouldn't have felt that his main obligation was to his fans and other people, perhaps commercially, who were involved in his career. You know, his main obligation perhaps should have been to himself. Now, as far as uh, more disturbing things in the chart are concerned, OK, now we know. So, so we know he died at 25. We know that uh, he probably committed suicide. So what else should we be looking at? I look at the Mars-Saturn contact. As you know, if you've been watching my videos a lot, I'm really into the Mars-Saturn pair, particularly if one's trying to talk about death. So his Mars is at zero Pisces. His Saturn is at 15 Aries. Now, that's easy math. Basically, you can tell they're 45 degrees apart, 30 degrees in a sign. Saturn is halfway through the sign. So he has a Venus-Mars semi-square. So when you've got a Venus-Mars semi-square, um, there's going to be frustration. You know, there's his Mars trying to do something, trying to be assertive, trying to trying to perhaps be his own boss, be in control. And there's Saturn restraining him at every turn. Um, so there's a lot of frustration there, I think. Um, his style is very much cramped. And this Mars-Saturn semi-square has, has a midpoint at approximately 23 Pisces. 23 Pisces is halfway between them. And Uranus is semi-square, the Mars-Saturn midpoint. So Uranus on the Mars-Saturn midpoint suggests some kind of resolution, um, an attempt to, um, to deal with the problem. Um, now that might feel like um, dramatic action, you know, dramatic action to deal with frustration. Um, perhaps that's what happened. Perhaps, you know, perhaps, um, perhaps that was his, perhaps that was a suicide or maybe it was a suicide attempt. Maybe it was a cry for help. I don't know. Um, but Mars on, sorry, Uranus on the Mars Saturn midpoint, if you look at you know, for example, Eberton's combination of stellar influences, or um, I think Rules of Planetary Pictures talks about it. Um, well, it will talk about it, but uh, okay, let's just have a look at what Rules of Planetary Pictures would say about um, Uranus on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, Uranus on the Mars Saturn midpoint would. Okay, with uh, sudden actions which separate. Violent separation and death, sudden death. So that's in his horoscope all the time. This concept of sudden death. You know, yesterday I talked about Jupiter on the Mars Saturn midpoint being about quick death. Uranus on the Mars Saturn midpoint is about sudden death, a death which is completely unexpected. As far as um, what was going on when he died, um, so we can um, we could, we've now got his chart in the middle, and when outside we've got the position of the planets when his body was found. I have no idea when precisely his his body was found. Uh, I've, this is the time for nine p.m. on April nineteenth, twenty twenty-three, in Seoul, South Korea. Um, so. What can we what can we see? What can we glean? Um, I think um, I think we have to look at the Mars Saturn midpoint. So we've already we've already noticed we've already noticed that he has Uranus on the Mars Saturn midpoint. So let's look at the Mars Saturn midpoint um, for when he for when he died. So there is Mars, sorry, there's Saturn at 4 Pisces, there's Mars at 12 Cancer. So that means 
that the Mars-Saturn midpoint was at around 8 Taurus. So this Mars-Saturn midpoint at 8 Taurus was square his Uranus, so the which is itself on the Mars-Saturn midpoint. So the Mars-Saturn midpoint when he died was pretty close to the position of a Mars-Saturn midpoint when he was born. And that Mars-Saturn midpoint was triggering his triggering Uranus. So I think that might be one thing to look at. Another thing I found somewhat interesting um, was that in his natal chart, he has um, the hypothetical planet Kronos aspecting his Venus-Mars midpoint. So Venus is here, Mars is there. I haven't included Kronos in this aspect, in this um, chart. So Kronos is the government, but it might also be about corporate entities and about brands. And it's possible that um, his sexuality, which is Venus Mars, you know, Venus Mars is all about sexuality. So if you have Kronos on the Venus Mars midpoint, then that might suggest that his sexuality is being branded. And so that might have been um, a bit of a problem. And you, we can see well, when he died, Neptune was aspecting his Kronos. So Neptune was sort of aspecting his Venus Mars midpoint. So there may be an issue there. I mean, a sexual issue in the sense of not being able to express himself outside the corporate branding of his own sexuality. Anyway, those are some thoughts on um, Moonbin. Um, I'm sorry he's died and he died and it would seem that he was um, under a lot of pressure. So let's now turn to today's um, astrology. Um, there's not a great deal going on. Um, in general, it's not a bad day. The moon is in Gemini. Um, it is sort of moving towards a conjunction of Venus. So in terms of relationships, it should be quite good. We can express ourselves, you know, not necessarily in a completely overly emotional way, but we can, there's a lot of talk and banter, able to express ourselves through words and get our feelings out through what we say. And that, you know, that should make it, make it a day that's, you know, not too bad. Nothing, nothing very spectacular. Uh, however, it should be pointed out that Pluto is aspecting the Mercury-Mars midpoint. Now, Mercury-Mars is about um, angry words, animated conversation. Pluto on the Mercury-Mars midpoint, people are very persuasive. They come over verbally very strongly. They try to do, try, try to persuade us to do things their way. Of course, works both ways. If we're the persuader, if we want to get people to do things our way, then with Mercury, with Pluto on the Mercury Mars midpoint, we can, we can, we can uh, really have a big influence. So perhaps you'll want to um, be a persuader, in which case, um, you know, do consider the moral dimension. Don't come over too strongly because really that's not nice. Another thing to bear in mind is that the sun is aspecting, um, the sun is making a square to Vulcanus. Vulcanus is a forceful energy. Um, and so if we want to really stamp our leadership on our environment, even though it is a Saturday, it's supposed to be a weekend. Yes, we can do it. But we do have to consider the cost. Now, as far as the 12 signs are concerned, I'm just quickly going to go through them. Aries, four stars. Your words hit home with laser beam precision. 
Taurus, five stars. Your popularity rating is steadily rising. Gemini, five stars. One of those days when Geminis can express their feelings. Cancer, four stars. You can participate without committing. Relationships look fine. Leo, four stars. You can establish your power, but don't go over the top. And that is because the sun, your ruler, is square Vulcanus. Uh, I know the Vulcanus is about, is, you know, that square is traditionally a difficult aspect, but the fact that there is an aspect does allow you to express your power to its full. Virgo, four stars. Someone with a different or foreign perspective is just a ticket. Libra, four stars. A time to consider your travel plans. A new opportunity is coming your way. And that is because Venus is the ruler of Libra and the moon is moving towards, towards Venus. So it's like a symbolism of something moving towards you. And I think it's quite a good thing moving towards you, whatever it is, whether it's a personal situation, whatever. Scorpio. A flash of, of a flash of verbal anger can change everything. And I think that's because of the Pluto on the Mercury Mars midpoint. I know I don't regard Pluto as being ruler of Scorpio, but I think that Pluto on the Mercury Mars midpoint might somehow have an impact on Scorpios in, in particular. Sagittarius, four stars. Relationships of all kinds start moving into new territory. Capricorn, five stars. Career and business are areas of opportunity, and love matters aren't too bad either. Aquarius, four stars. You're very creative, but don't let another person's ego spoil the party. And finally, Pisces, three stars. Don't do today what you can put off until tomorrow. So let's now move on to the I Ching. And the first hexagram I threw, I got with the coins, was enthusiasm. Now that sounds great. It might sound on the surface as if you're, you know, very enthusiastic. Um, you want to get things done. Um, you know, you're optimistic. Yeah, you can make things happen. But it's not quite like that. Because when you look at the lines that are moving within the hexagram, it's the second line that moves. And the second line that moves is about not being swept up by other people's enthusiasm. It's not you being enthusiastic. It's about other people being enthusiastic. You can see them being enthusiastic. You can see them getting excited. And you know that it's probably misplaced. This enthusiasm isn't actually going anywhere. And enthusiasm moves to deliverance. Hexagram number 40. Now that suggests to me that a lot of these people enthusiastic about things, optimistic about things, are actually moving in a very dangerous direction. So from your perspective, your first responsibility is to bring them down to reality. You know, show them that they're, that they're that they've got it wrong. But if you can't do that, you can get out of their way. That's a deliverance. You can get yourself out of a bad situation, particularly towards the end of the day. Anyway, that is all I've got to say for today. And I will talk to you tomorrow.